All right, guys, welcome back. In this module, we are going to talk about something called placement campaigns, also known as placement targeting. You should be very excited with this because this is a different way of doing display ads, except now we get to choose where we're going to run them. Now, we're going to put a campaign together, but today we're not going to save that campaign because in that test account, I've already gotten a disapproved letter from Google for the last test one that we did. So I don't want to take the chance on, you know, making these fake ads uh, that um, don't get approved and Google gets pissed at me. So we're not going to save that ad today because I don't want to risk my account. So let's talk about placement campaign, help you understand what that is. Basically, a placement campaign a placement campaign is a display campaign. In other words, you're running ads on websites where People weren't necessarily looking for you. They were reading content about a particular subject matter. Now, with a placement campaign, the difference is you can choose where to run that campaign. So let's say, for example, we know that someone reading, um, you, you tell Google my product is about weight loss. Google goes out and finds every website that has to do with weight loss and that's where they're going to run your ad. But on a placement campaign, we can do what's called kind of demographic targeting. In other words, it doesn't have to be a website about weight loss. It could be a website where I know women are there. And since 70 to 80 percent of the people buying a weight loss product are going to be female. Well, we know if, if it's women on this website, then I want to be there. Whereas in the display network, you weren't going to be able to target that because Google is running it based on contextual targeting. In other words, your target has to match the thought and the idea. So in placement, we can choose where we want to run that ad, even though it may not be a contextual match. All right. So, for example, if I am selling a dating offer, right, dating is going to be mostly men that are going to click on a dating ad. Well, if how many guys are going to go out and go out and look and read an article that has to do with dating? I don't know how many, but I sure know that every young kid who's on uh, a website like Sports Illustrated is interested in, or interested in dating. So I can run an ad on that site, even though the contextual targeting doesn't match, but I know the offer matches the audience. Okay, so basically it's display campaign, except you can choose where your ads run. Now let's talk about the benefits. Number one is you get to choose where your ads run. Uh, you can easily create matching creatives. And here's what I mean by that. So if I'm on Sports Illustrated, because I know I've chosen Sports Illustrated as where this ad is going to run, I can have a creative that says, uh, attention, Sports Illustrated fans, how to get more dates. So now I can actually target my creative to the audience, not only from a tech standpoint, but I can also look at where my ads are going to run and I can have my banners and my images actually match the graphics and the colors that's on that website. So they think it's part of the Sports Illustrated brand, which will garner a higher click through rate. So you get to choose where your ads are going to be. You get to uh, have more control over your creatives. Uh, again, what that allows you to do is you get to continue that conversation like we talked about in the ad writing part, right? They're on Sports Illustrated. If it's a blue website, let's give them a blue banner. And now let's take them to a landing page that kind of looks like Sports Illustrated, right? Because again, we're continuing that conversation that's going on in their head. I can easily track performance. So I can see, hey, my Sports Illustrated ad is not working. The Sports Illustrated page is not converting. So I can take that out. So um, there's a lot of good benefits to why you would want to do this. Uh, again, the other piece is because you're now able to choose where your ads are running, you can also choose the demographics. I can also choose places to run my ads where normally it would not run. So let's talk about two types of campaigns that you're going to run when it comes to placement targeted. The first one is a straight placement. In other words, Google here are the websites where I want you to run my ad. So an example may be Women's Day, right? So you go to womensday.com, you find out they're running ads by Google, and you tell Google, run my ads on these websites. That's the first one. The second one, which I think is 
Awesome. This is keyword with placement. So let me explain what we do. Step number one, we pick our keywords. We say Google, find me all the content that has to do with weight loss. Now for this, you want to look at what we call authority sites, big major websites. And I'm going to show you examples in a little bit. But you find the big websites and you say Google on this particular website. So in this case, we're looking at Amazon. Show me every web page on Amazon that has to do with weight loss. And that's where I want you to run my ad. I want you to think of how powerful that is. You want to advertise on Amazon, but do you really want to advertise on the section or the web page that's talking about car audio if you have a weight loss product? You probably don't. But if you can find every web page that's on Amazon that's talking about weight loss, you'd want to run there. Now, I'm going to show you a tool that helps me find them, but you can also do this inside of the um, uh, Google campaign. Now, the difference between using a tool and inside Google campaign is, again, if you do it inside the campaign, you don't have a choice. Google goes and finds its pages that it finds that has to do with weight loss versus if you use a tool, you can say, here are the specific pages that I want to use. So let's talk about finding placements. How do you find where you are going to run? Number one, you can go and do a Google search. And a couple things that you can do in Google is you go into Google, you say, you type in your keyword, and then you type in ads by Google. Uh, you type in newsletters. Uh, you know what? Let's do a quick search. Let's go to Google and do a quick search. And let's show that to you right now. Okay, so we're in Google. Let's do a search for weight loss and let's do articles because I know a website that has to do with articles is going to have ads on there. All right, so we see here that's an ad roll. That's not necessarily by Google. It could be, but that's a retargeting ad. Are these Google ads? I mean, that's Google AdSense. So if they have that there, chances are they might have it here as well. Here it is. Google, that's a Google ad. So we just found uh, a website. So we may say, hey, let's take this, copy, and we may add this to our list. So we go in one at a time in Google and we find all the ones, you know, WebMD will be one. Um, Medical news today might be another. Men's health might be another. So we just take it and say, hey, Google, I want you to run my ad on this page. Let's see if this is running ads by Google. Let's take a look. Not sure if it is, but let's pretend that it is. So we're just going to copy that and we're gonna add it to our list. So now when we go to Google, we're gonna say these two are the very specific pages that we want to run our ads on. So let's continue. Uh, so you've got Google searches. Uh, you may have any website you come across that you find is running Google ads. And the key that's important is you wanna go in and download something called the Compete toolbar so let's show you what that looks like uh, when we're on this website I click on I've got the compete toolbar you can download it at seobook.com again that's seobook.com now I can click on this link and what it's going to give me an idea of is how much traffic this website is getting look 1.6 million people a month are searching on this particular website so that is a good website for us to want to use for our, our targeting. So long as they're, they're getting at least 5,000 searches a month or more, you want to use them. Anything less than that, it's not worth your, your effort unless it's a very, very, very specific web page. Now, notice I said web page, not website, because we want to run on pages. Uh, you've got something called a Google Display Planner, which I will show you that in a second. Uh, that's inside your Google AdWords account. And then we've got authority sites. You know, the authority sites are the Amazons, the about.com, WebMD, 
all these major websites that you can go out and target for um, some of their landing pages that you can go ahead and run ads on. When you look at about.com, which may have millions and millions and millions and millions of pages, you don't want to run on all of about.com. You want to run specifically on the pages that have to do with weight loss if that's your niche. So let's show you a tool right quick. Let's go here. I'm going to show you a tool that we have that I call it the Google Scraper or the Authority Scraper uh, tool. So this particular tool here, what this does is I can type in a site, an authority site, about.com. And then I'm going to type in a keyword. In this particular case, I'm going to type in weight loss. What it's going to let me do is it's going to let me search weight, uh, weight loss on about.com. And it's going to show me every single web page that has to do with weight loss on about.com. So if someone is on the dog training website or they're on the piano page in about.com, it's not going to give me those because I don't want to advertise to those people. I only want to advertise to the people reading weight loss content on about.com. The next thing we do, I'm going to go in here. I don't need the columns. I just need the URL for now. And then I click. Let's go back and let's click. Uh, let's go back to our settings tab here. That looks good. That looks good. Let's click search. Okay, so we, we can actually stop because you already have the idea here. Look at this. First URL, weightloss.about.com. The second URL is exercise.about.com, weight loss. So every single one of these, what do we know? They all have to do with weight loss. So I can actually take this copy to clipboard and let's create a new notepad. Did you see how fast I was able to do that? Folks, look at this. These are the actual URLs that I can now take and paste into Google. Now I may not need the HTTP colon slash slash, so I may do this, edit, replace, HTTP colon slash slash, and replace with nothing. Replace all, I do it correct, HTTP colon slash slash, there we go. Okay, so these pages here all have to do with weight loss. Now I can take these and I can tell Google only show my ads on these pages. So let's look at one here. Copy. Let's go to Google. Conquer your weight changes that lead to long term weight loss. Now look at this, omega-3 acid. Now you see, this is someone that is not targeting the way I'm showing you. So what's happening is their ad is being shown on run of site, on display, versus targeting the way I'm showing you. Because if it was targeted, this ad would have said weight loss. Um, these ads here would have said weight loss. Now this one here is a weight loss ad. That is an ad by Google. Let's see if we see any other ads. Um, shocking Spanish videos. Really, a, shock, a Spanish video on a weight loss page, this person is not targeting the right way. So, what I'm showing you allows you to laser focus your ad right to this web page here, which is exactly what you want to do. Uh, let's look at this one, assess your weight. Again, look at these ads, thyroids. These ads are just not targeted. Now, this one is Atkins, Garcinia, Garcinia. Okay, these are a little bit more targeted, but some of these other ones just absolutely are not targeted whatsoever. So that is this tool here. Uh, actually, this tool is not available to the public. Uh, I am the only person on the planet right now that has this tool, and we may actually make it available. If it is, you'll see a link below uh, where you can get access to this tool. So let's go into Google and let's show you the Google Ad Display Planner. So we're in Google now and we want to find some places to run our ads for weight loss. So we, you click on tools over here. Once you go to tools, you're going to click on Display Planner. 
Okay, now we're here. Let's type in our keyword is weight loss. And we need to enter a website. Could be your website, could be some other person's website. It can be an authority site. I would tell you, you know, find a website that's already established and Google um, can give you much better results. So if we go to google.com, let's type in weight loss. Now let's pick one of these sites. Let's take this one here, webmd.com forward slash diet. Why this one? Because Google said for weight loss, this is a great one. We type that in. We don't need this. Everything else, you know, if you're not in the United States, you can choose your country. If you not, if you're not in English, you can choose your language. And I leave as direct response. I don't really go for get ad group ideas because I'm going to create my own ad groups, but I want to get placement ideas. Another thing that I, I do also is I may take an, a, a ClickBank product, like I've run this with Truth About Abs, and I've looked at what those numbers look like as well. So first of all, Google comes in and gives us some data. Look at this. The average person looking for weight loss is between the ages of 25 to 34, uh, 35 to 44, 16%, and look how, how it starts to drop, right? So that means if you're going to run a campaign, if you want to use demographics, you're not going to you're not going to target 55 to 65 because the market is too small. You don't want that. Um, look at the numbers, female to male, 25% uh, unknown. This numbers are interesting because when I've done surveys, my numbers were 67% were female between the ages of 20 to 30, which is falling in line with this number here. Um, this is interesting. Look at this. 33% desktop, 53% mobile. So normally for me, I start with desktop on an ad. And once I've get, got the ad working, then you go to mobile. But imagine if you ignored the mobile number. Look at that. That's 53% of the marketplace. You just do not want to uh, ignore that. Now, here is where the fun begins. Okay. Now, Google is giving us numbers here. Look at this, folks. These are all the websites that Google is telling us that have to do with weight loss. Now, what's cool about these is the sheer volume of traffic. Health.com, 20 million uh, impressions per week. Weight Watchers, 3.5 million. You think if you're advertising on WeightWatchers.com that you're reaching people who are looking to lose weight? I would think so. Uh, Fit Day, 5 to 10 million per week. Uh, WikiHow, uh, health articles, 5 million. Uh, FatSecret.com, 3 million. Skinny Mom, 4 million. So these are some really good uh, keywords, or not keywords, but pages that you can advertise on. Then you've got relevance. That's just basically some algorithm where they say, let's see how relevant this web page is to what you are looking for. So obviously the ones in the green are going to be better. But I'm going to tell you the problem for me when you go this way is you're doing run of site. Um, for fat secrets, may not be that bad of, bad of a thing to be run of site for fat secrets because everything on this site is going to be weight loss. But when you start looking at WikiHow, Fit Today, I mean, Fit Today probably is good. Uh, weight Watchers would be good. Health.com, well, I don't know about that. You know, let's go to health.com and take a look. Okay, look, recipes, diet and fitness, beauty. Do I really, really want to be on the beauty site? For demographic targeting, yeah, but if I really want to be honed in on my marketing, I don't want to be on the, you know, the hair and makeup page. I want to be on the diet and fitness page. Using the tool that I showed you, I can come in here and uh, let's do that right quick. Let's go to clear list. Let's go back to uh, our application. health.com and we can type in diet see that look at how easily I'm able to get these pages that have to do with diet 
Now, every once in a while, you may get a page like this one, which has some funky characters on it. So you just may have to go in and check a few of these to make sure they're working fine. Uh, but, you know, uh, and these are all computer geeky stuff, so I don't need to explain what that is. But anyway, let's go back to uh, Google here. And um, so we can actually go in and pick Weight Watchers will show you similar placements. So if we click on that, it'll show you some similar placements that have to do with Weight Watchers. So again, the challenge here is your run of sight. And run of sight means, yes, I've chosen where I want to run, but I'm not controlling the individual pages of where I want to run my ad. So let's show you creating a campaign. So let's go back to campaigns. Creating your campaign is the same thing as uh, every other thing. You're gonna go here, you're gonna click on create campaign, and you're gonna click on display network only. Uh, I've already clicked that and done that, so let's click on the one I've created. Um, once I've done that, the next thing I wanna do is create my ad groups, just like everything else, so we're gonna create an ad group. So we've got our ad group. Uh, we've got our um, CPC, let's set this at 25 cents. So now we have our choices, okay? So let's use a different targeting method. So um, we're gonna click that. What we're gonna choose is placements, right? Not topics, not age, not gender, but placements. Now, once we do that, we've got some options. We can come in here and type in our keyword, weight loss. We're gonna hit search. These pages are gonna look very similar to what we saw under the display planner, okay? So, but you see a lot of things. Look at this, you know, Modiphase, DocuClam, you know, Fat Loss Junkie might be a good one. So 20 to 25K impression. So we, we may add this one, we click that one. Mini Mins, I may have to look that up. DWiz, Jen Pepper, have no idea who that is. So we may have to look up and see, is Jen Pepper a good one for us? Let's take a look. Okay, so she's got a blog. So here's what's happening. She's got, she's doing, you know, she's doing Nutrisystem week 14 weight loss problems. So she's probably, you know, talking about her weight loss. So Google looked at it and says, this website is about weight loss. So not a good target for us. Um, but Weight Watchers, that may be a good one. Fit Today, that may be a good one. Um, WikiHow, well, we may not really want to run all WikiHow because that may not be good. Hub Pages, maybe not. Skinny Mom, maybe. Weight Watchers, maybe. Okay. Now, if you really want to get down uh, into the tracking, you can create each one of these in a separate campaign. One campaign for Fat Loss Junkie, one campaign, or I can say campaign, one ad group for Fat Loss Junkie, one ad group for Weight, Lo Weight Watchers, one ad group for Fit Today. That way you can look at how each one is doing individually. So that is how we can uh, find the targets based on what Google is telling us. Now, how do we do it when we went out here and we got all of these targets here, right? So we said, hey, this is what we want to target. We want to target all these pages on about.com. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go back to Google. You see this little button here that says add multiple placements at once. You're going to click that and then you're going to hit paste. Now, if any of these has a, a, an error in the URL, like the one I showed you before where it had uh, a funky character, when you click on add, it's going to tell you. So in this case, none of these had an error, so we're pretty good, we're good. So all we have to do now is save and continue, and then we would go into um, writing our ad. So this is how you add your uh, placement. I mean, this is not hard, but think about what we're able to do now. I can run ads that say, you know, weight loss strategies only for about.com readers. Do you know how powerful that is to be able to do that? Those people think that is you or, or that you're talking directly to them. You can say, hey, about.com readers, secret weight loss strategy that's only revealed here. How awesome is that? So let's remove all of these. And I'm going to show you how to do something else. We're going to 
take a quick look at Amazon. Let's go to Amazon. We type in weight loss. Now, as we scroll to the bottom here, these are ads by Google. Now, there's a couple ways that you can get. There's two. There's a couple different ads here. You've got ads by Google, and then you also have ads that are, are A9 ads, which are directly from Amazon. If you're going to show here because it's coming from Google, you've got to do one of two things. One, you can have partner network turned on. If you remember when we created our ad, we talked about the partner network, right? That's people searching um, on other websites, but Google is going to show those ads. The challenge is it's not going to be as targeted as if we were to tell Google, hey, um, I want my ad to show on this page because let's pick a better product. Let's pick Raspberry Ketone. So you sell Raspberry Ketone. Did I spell it wrong? I sure did. But wouldn't you want your ad to run on this page, the same page that everyone else is typing in raspberry ketone. I mean, that's where you'd want your, your ad to run. You wouldn't want it to run on the automotive page. Someone who has money is looking for raspberry ketone. They came in here and typed it in and that's where you want your ad to run. So we're telling Google run my ad on this page. Okay. That's exactly what we are doing. Uh, I don't know if they run ads on the actual product pages itself. Let's take a look. No, they don't, which, which makes sense. I think that would be pretty messed up to run the ads on someone's page. I will tell you who does do that, and, and that is eBay. So if we type in Raspberry Ketone, again, we can scroll to the bottom. And look, what do you see here, folks? <laughs> look at all these ads. These are all ads that are sponsored ads that you can run your content in a search uh, uh, platform as well. So how do we do that? How do we get our ads there? Like I said, you can turn on partner network, but it's really not targeted. You can't choose to run your ad on this specific page. Um, so let's take this URL here. I can go to Google and say, well, this, this is the URL we want. Because if I would have taken that other URL, you wouldn't have got any impressions because there's no ads on this page, right? So we want the page where we see the ads. Here we go. This page has all the ads. Here they are. So I want to copy this URL. And when I create my campaign in Google, I want to say, Google, run my ad here. The other thing that I can do is using this tool here. Let's clear list, go back to advanced search. Amazon.com. Raspberry Ketone. The other thing I can do is use this tool and then have uh, Google show, show me all the pages. Let's copy the clipboard. So here are all the pages that have to do with Raspberry Ketone that's on Amazon. Or the next one, which is also a pretty amazing one, is this. Let's close this one. Let's remove that. We can go into, whoops, okay. We can go into keywords. We did keyword display the other day. Watch this. So we create a keyword campaign. So now you're going to add multiple keywords in here. I'm just putting one. So you may find every different way that Raspberry Ketone is being typed in. Um, and then we're going to narrow your targeting even further. So we go down here. We select placement and add multiple add a placement and then all we're going to type in is amazon.com and then we add so here's what we just told google we just told google show me every 
page that has to do with raspberry ketone, but only show them the ones that are, or show, show my ad to anywhere they're talking about raspberry ketone, but only on amazon.com. Now again, we lose the control by doing this because we don't, we, we don't have the ability to choose which pages on Amazon our ad is running on, but at least we get to uh, do our targeting and target people who are on those pages. So once you're done, you hit save. Once you hit save, it's gonna take you to the page where you create your ad, and we've already gone through that ad writing process. It doesn't change, no matter what c campaign you're running, creating the ad doesn't change. It's the exact same process. And then we just save that, and then we are done, and then you're ready to go. That's all there is to it. This is how you create a placement campaign. This is a very, very powerful campaign, and it's one that very few people are using, and you can use to your own benefits. Guys, we'll see you on the next module.